uh, Professor Joy Sarojini Michael to give the next talk. She will be speaking to us on sterilization and disinfection. And at the end of her talk, we'll welcome questions from all of you to both our speakers. Thank you. Good morning once again. Uh, because my colleague uh, Dr. Hema had to take off due to personal reasons uh, in the last minute, I'll be, I am giving two talks. So sorry to uh, talk again, again and again. And uh, hope this is more. Uh, uh, it's more application uh, based and hope you are able to take home a lot of messages from all the three talks and you can ask us if you have any doubts in the end. So uh, we're going to dwell again on how to prevent infections in the hospital and this time by means of sterilization and disinfection uh, and how to create an environment safe for our patients uh, where th when they stay in our hospital. And these are the organisms that are there in the environment uh, in the hospital as well as in the community and what we're trying to protect our patients are from these organisms. They can be viruses which are really, really small and like your uh, poliovirus and uh, the names that you can uh, relate to are HIV and poliovirus and hepatitis viruses but the ones that cause uh, problems are influenza viruses and other gastro infections causing diarrhea in the wards. Bacteria, the common ones that you can remember are E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus, but there are lots more that cause problems. The ones especially with spores like, like Clostridia that causes tetanus and uh, anthrax causing uh, bacilli are the spore forming ones which are more difficult to uh, control. And fungi are your candida and um, uh, all the filamentous fungi that grow on your bread and in, in the walls during damp season. And you have your parasites, which are your amoeba and um, uh, all your worms, helminths. So in a hospital, this is what happens. The patient is there. And suppose you take this patient is your uh, index, uh, the patient that you are worried about. And he is uh, really unwell and he's sitting in one of the wards. And so many things are there as sources of infections around him. This is a patient in the next bed. These are the healthcare workers that come and look after him. These are the instruments that you're going to use on this patient. And these are the environment, the toilet, the wash area, uh, the door knobs, etc., the things that he is going to interact with. So these are the uh, people and the animate and the inanimate objects that are there around him which can uh, be sources of infection for him. So how do you control this? How do you are able to keep uh, him safe from all this? So these are the methods that uh, we do. That is we do um, methods of sterilization and disinfection of the instruments that we use um, of the environment that he is staying in to make sure that we give him a safe him or her a safe environment. So just before we go into the various methods, I'd just like to go through with you what is sterilization. Sterilization is a method by which you kill all organisms, that is uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi, including difficult ones like spores. I'll tell you um, which are the most difficult in the next slide. Whereas disinfection, you're not killing everything. You can't kill the spores, but you're able to remove most of the organisms. So by just using disinfectants like lysol or phenol, you're able to disinfect and not sterilize. Sterilization, you go to a higher level, which uh, again I'll be talking about. And anything like sterilization and disinfection, you cannot do without cleaning. So you will have to clean, take out the blood or any organic material that is there from the surface or on the equipment with soap and water before you use the disinfectant or the sterilizing method because you cannot penetrate anything through uh, organic matter like blood or body fluids. In, the, in, in, in a hospital, the instruments or the equipments are divided into critical, semi-critical or non-critical depending on where you are going to put that instrument in. If the, if the instrument is going to enter into a sterile site, that is into the body cavity or into the blood system, then it is a critical instrument. Semi-critical where it will touch the mucosa but it won't go into the blood area and non-critical where it will touch only your skin. So, for example, if the needles and scalpels and other surgical instruments that is going to go deep in and cut the body, it is critical. And there you have to be absolutely sure that you're killing every organism that is there on the equipment and that is called sterilization. Whereas in semi-critical, you have to use higher level disinfectants, um, uh, even up to sterilins, uh, chemical sterilins, to make sure that you know you are absolutely safe, like scopes that you do to visualize um, in deeper parts of the body, like endoscopes for your gut, laryngoscopes for your throat, or bronchoscope down your respiratory tract. 
and non-critical are like thermometers which you just put it in the mouth they are actually slightly more critical than your uh, stethoscopes and VV cuffs which you use on the surface thermometer at least goes into your mouth and so they have to be disinfected with an intermediate uh, level disinfectant like alcohols and then a stethoscope can be cleaned with uh, a lower concentration of alcohol also so the most resistant of the organisms that I listed out are the spores the spores are like seeds and they can resist any kind of temperature, any kind of disinfection if you use any chemical. So you will have to do a sterilization method like autoclaving or hot air oven that I will be telling you. The next most difficult organism to kill is mycobacteria followed by small uh, non-enveloped viruses. Then gram-negative bacteria, fungi like candida and aspergillus. Uh, larger uh, non-enveloped viruses, gram-positive bacteria and then enveloped viruses which have a fatty layer which can be dissolved. So to kill these organisms on the top you need to sterilize high level disinfectant up to mycobacteria, intermediate up to your uh, viruses and low level gram-positive uh, and gram-negative bacteria and downwards. So the different methods of sterilization and disinfection. Sterilization, I think you've heard a little bit from Dr. Walson's talk also. You have, uh, you have uh, heat and you have uh, radiation and filtration. So radiation, you've heard a little bit about UV rays. Um, and uh, in heat is what we're going to, um, uh, under the heat, you have moist heat and dry heat is what you're going to look at uh, very briefly today. And filtration, again, you heard about filtration of the air by HEPA filters. And so you can also filter uh, liquids with help of membranes. All those I won't go through, but the important ones that we use in the institution is what I'll go through. And then the chemicals that we use for environmental disinfectants, we have a whole list of alcohols, aldehydes, phenolics, chlorine, iodine, uh, heavy metals, etc. that I will just tell you very briefly about because the talk is only for uh, 20 minutes. So for the critical sterilization we use uh, methods such as um, um, autoclaving um, by sterilization by heat and there is a gas called ethylene oxide which can be used for heat sensitive instruments and also another liquid called glutaraldehyde which is commonly called Cydex which is also a chemical sterilant which can be used for scopes which are sensitive to heat. For semi-critical items you have again you can use glutaraldehyde which is liquid which will not damage your, um, your um, instruments that are sensitive and very delicate. Then you have hydrogen peroxide which is an oxidizing agent which is again very good in killing uh, mycobacteria up to semi-critical items and and some semi-critical, that is um, items which are, and non-critical items, you can you start using alcohols and phenols for environmental disinfection or thermometer disinfection. And for low level, you can use uh, sodium hypochlorite, uh, the chlorine compounds, alcohols, phenolics, or even quaternary ammonium compounds, which are the lowest. So I think many of you know what autoclaves are, many of you have seen it. So here the principle is you use a very high level or very high temperatures at under pressure. So usually the co most common autoclaves have 121 degrees for 15 minutes for 15 psi pressure. So you put all your things inside but only um, things that can tolerate your um, uh, moisture as well as heat because it's your sterilizing by moist heat. And it's usually um, surgical uh, gowns, uh, other dressings, uh, non-sharps uh, instruments and laboratory wear. Go into an autoclave and this is the principle and moist heat under pressure like your pressure cooker, the temperature goes up and it is sterilized. Whereas hot air oven is a dry heat, there is no moisture, it's just a machine, uh, it's just a instrument with uh, heating blocks and there is a fan that distributes the heat. Here because it is dry heat and there is no additional pressure, you have to heat it for longer, temperatures are higher and for longer and this is for sharps and uh, things like oil, grease and powder that can uh, get destroyed by moisture so you have to use uh, dry heat and this is again used very commonly in the operation theatres and the, uh, in the labs. Ethylene oxide uh, is a very good uh, chemical gaseous sterilant. The only big problem is it's very toxic and, and explosive. So uh, we have only, uh, 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 we have ethylene oxide sterilizer in one area that is in the central supplies, uh, sterile supplies unit and there a lot of care is taken on how to deal with this 
um, machine where the material is kept in and then it's closed and it's sterilized by ethylene oxide. But it's a very useful instrument uh, method of sterilizing because you can sterilize all your heat sensitive scopes, plastics, reusable plastics uh, because they won't get damaged and um, they uh, can be uh, you know, effectively sterilized and used very safely on patients. Glutaraldehyde is another chemical which uh, is used like a soak in, in, um, in uh, smaller areas like when you are doing multiple endoscopic uh, procedures or you are using instruments that need to be quickly sterilized. Um, it's a two person glutaraldehyde also commonly known as Cydex and you just soak it for the t time that the instructions in the manufacturer's instructions giving usually 20 minutes for most of the organisms and for hepatitis and HIV for slightly higher. Uh, maybe 30, 35 minutes, but you have to read the label. So whenever you use disinfectants or any chemicals or any, any method for sterilization, always follow the label. So you soak it and then and dry it um, uh, before you use it on the next patient. So where your turnover is more, you can use this when compared to ethylene oxide um, sterilization. So how do you know whether your sterilization is working or not? There are multiple biochemical and biological indicators and chemical indicators. So uh, chemical indicators is easier because you have strips that are there that you just stick it on the uh, load of um, um, material that is going in along with your dressing or your instruments, put it inside the sterilizer and when it comes out, if there is a, um, if it becomes dark, if it becomes the lines become darker, then it is uh, good, your, uh, the method of sterilization has worked and if it is light, it has not worked. Similarly, you have biological indicators more done in the microbiology department, so we put spores of organisms uh, into, the, uh, uh, into the sterilizing instrument and we take it out and if we can grow it, that means you know, the sterilizer has not worked. If it doesn't grow, that means the spores are killed and it is not able to germinate and produce bacteria. So that means your machine has worked. So the growth here indicates it's bad and no growth is good. So we have various methods to check whether our instrument is working or not. Disinfectants, like I told you earlier, will kill most of the vegetative bacteria, that is the non-spore bacteria, but it all depends on the time, the temperature, various factors according to the manufacturer's instructions and according to the guidelines and we should always use disinfectants that are environmentally safe which is safe for you, which is safe uh, for the patients because it should not be toxic, it should not cause damage to the skin, not cause cancer to the skin, it should not cause damage to the instrument, it should not cause damage to the environment. So there are lots and lots of uh, disinfectants and when and how you should use, you should have guidelines and we have put it down in our hospital infection control guidelines and please follow that if you have, if not follow uh, international guidelines or national guidelines that are available. So the most important thing is use the correct dilution. If it says use 2%, use 2%. Don't increase it. Just because you increase it does not mean that the effectiveness will be more. If they say use 70%, use 70%. Don't decrease or increase. And use the correct measure. Just don't use like you're cooking. Just put whatever you feel like and mix it. Because the concentration is very important. The temperature is very important. The pH is important. All the instructions please read. Do not exceed the time. Just because you keep it for uh, 30 minutes doesn't mean that you know it will kill more than if you keep the recommended time for 20 minutes. And always use gloves and um, see the compatibility to gloves, basins. It should not be acids that can corro corrode through your instruments or through your gloves. So make sure that you know it is compatible before you uh, use any disinfectant. And like I emphasized earlier, cleaning is very, very important. Remove all the blood, body fluids, take as much as possible out, wash with water, running water, or if you don't have, soak it and clean it with a brush. Remove everything because disinfectants cannot penetrate through uh, soiled matter, whether it is blood or body fluids or feces or any other organic matter, it cannot penetrate. So please clean with good soap and water before you do any disinfection. And also people are doing it. 
please wear proper personal protective equipment. Don't do it with your bare hands. Don't do it without a mask if there is something like a glutaraldehyde or Cydex or any other vapor producing bleach that produces a lot of toxic fumes. Wear masks, wear goggles if you are going to create a lot of um, aerosols. Uh, wear mas uh, gloves, wear boots if you are going to be soaking a lot of. And this is what we are trying to insist in, in laundry and various places where uh, people are involved with a lot of soaking and a lot of uh, uh, liquid with disinfectants and environment like I told you we do environmental um, surveillance but environment is very very important source of infection because all of us go around touching the patients touch the environment and then we go go away and they become good places where these organisms can survive especially hardy organisms like pseudomonas and they become an important source of infection for the patients and these excess are the places where we have found more organisms so like I told you, the, if it, it is by either by direct contact or, um, or through the hands of healthcare personnel that organisms go and settle in this environment. So um, what are the areas that are commonly infected? Uh, the bed rails, uh, these are studies that have shown bed rails, call bells, IV pumps, IV poles, toilets, commode chairs, telephones, TV remotes, all this list, you know, switches over uh, tables, uh, door knobs, all these are areas that need to be taken care of. And when you clean a room, these are the areas that you should take care and clean thoroughly uh, with either with the disinfectants or soap and water after a patient leaves or when cleaning is done. You have to instruct your cleaning staff to clean these areas. So what, what are the disinfectants that are being used in the, uh, in the wards, in the hospitals? And this is a study that shows this. Majority are the chloride uh, base like your bleach, hypochloric acid, hypochlorous acid, sodium hypochlorite, etc. that are used, followed by alcohols and, and then um, uh, other halogens like uh, other chlorine containing compounds, quaternary ammonium compounds like uh, benzalkonium chloride and then all your others are being used. So the ones that are available in the pharmacy and that are recommended are the phenolics, halogens and the quaternary ammonium compounds. Phenolix is the uh, traditionally considered as the gold standard because from yester years phenol was the first disinfectant that was used uh, by um, uh, early uh, microbiologists and other uh, surgeons who tried to control infection in, in the hospitals. And uh, various forms of phenol are there, uh, chloroxyphenols and various other dioxyphenols, etc. are there. And the common names are Lysol and Detol that you use for environmental uh, disinfection. You cannot use it in certain areas like nursery, but um, most of the other areas you can use phenols, um, but you have to remember they are not sterilins, they are um, uh, intermediate level disinfectants and they do not kill spores. The other important ones are chlorine and iodine, halogens. Um, the most commonly used ones are bleach or sodium hypochlorite, which are used for actually intermediate or even sometimes uh, high level disinfection to kill the viruses. Um, the iodine based products are more used on the skin, live tissue and those are called antiseptics. That's not called disinfectants but the same disinfectant used on uh, living tissue is called antiseptics. And these are oxidizing agents which can actually kill um, directly the DNA and um, it is inactivated by organic material like blood. So you have to be careful to clean properly before, um, um, before being able to uh, disinfect with these, organism, uh, with these uh, chemicals. The least effective are quaternary ammonium compounds, but they are very, uh, very convenient, very easy to use and very, um, um, don't have much toxic effects. So they are used for disinfect patient care areas and equipments where they are not very uh, semi-critical or even lower. Um, but you have to remember that these are affected by hardness, hard water. So wherever you have hard water, try to use softness or um, or uh, try to use some other material, I mean, other disinfectants. And also, if there is high bio burden of microorganisms, uh, then these benzalkonium chloride, these uh, quaternary ammonium compounds cannot act. So you have a, a cleaning disinfectant protocol. Please give this to all your hospital staff. Um, you, can, uh, you can go through this. PDF will be given to you at the end of our talks. You can go through this and you can use it to put it up in your hospitals to, um, to help the, health, uh, the cleaning staff to use this protocol to clean the environment. We also have protocols to be given to patients um, to clean the wards after the patients leave and uh, especially if there are drug resistant organisms, we have to do really thorough cleaning uh, before they 
uh, leave. This is uh, something that many people ask questions about fogging of the environment. Earlier we used to do it with formalin of theaters and formaldehyde of the theaters, um, but it's not recommended anymore because it's highly toxic uh, to the uh, patients as well as to the people who are doing it. A lot of cancer inducing um, uh, properties are there. So the only one that is recommended is hydrogen peroxide based method, uh, which is uh, found to be very useful. So you can use it for our theaters and ICUs, not for routine uh, fogging. Hand disinfection we've already uh, covered in the previous talk. And here we use alcohols, ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, or bigovernites like chlorhexidine in combination with alcohol. And we uh, put it up everywhere. And every patient bed has these alcohols. So in conclusion, I can uh, tell you that patients, we are all striving during these two days of conference to create a safe environment for our patients. And how do we do it? Make sure that you know we sterilize all our equipments, disinfect the areas, and make it as safe as possible so that they don't get hospital-acquired uh, infections. And if you have your own guidelines, it's really good. But if you don't, please follow national or international guidelines that are there on sterilization and disinfection. Thank you.